Hello everyone, my name is Gus. Hi, I'm Woody. And today we're reacting to a video suggested by our friend Chris Richardson, oh, the cool. CEO of Deep Six. Okay. Um, we've had visits to Deep Six in the past. I'm actually going to link one up here uh, if you guys haven't seen that. But uh, one of the things we learned about Chris is that he was in the Canadian Navy. And we were talking to him and he's like, oh, by the way, do you know about this incident that happened to some Canadian divers that he was diving with, like in his dive team or whatever in the Canadian Navy. Oh. I had no idea. Okay. So he showed me a video and I was like, we need to show this story on Dive Talk. Oh, wow. It's, it's gnarly. So, I mean, if Chris thinks it's gnarly, right? Cause he doesn't think many things are gnarly. It takes a lot to, okay, well, let's take a look at it. Eee, this let's check it out. Scary. Yes, it's cold. It's all dry. Soon. When I was 17 years old, I took a scuba diving course. Did my first dive, really liked it. And I went into recruiting and said I wanted to be a diving officer in the Navy. Look at that giant stripe. So this I is... I am uh, Lieutenant Commander Roland Leet. I've been a clearance diver now for 14 years. Before that, I was a ship steam diver for two years. In June, I'll be coming uh, to the fleet diving unit as the commanding officer. Badass diver. Okay, boys. Today we're getting ready to do a whole search on the building of Quebec. Done! That water must be frigid. They are dressed for warmth. Dude. USS Ferris incident. The 8th of February, 1991, we, uh, we pull into Funchal, Madeira. As soon as we pulled alongside, we were asked by the CO and XO to do a whole search of our ship and uh, the USS Ferris, which was next to us. We had done the USS Ferris in previous ports, so it wasn't going to be an issue. Unless you could look into the future, we couldn't see what was going to happen to us. We did the Marguerite first, went to the inboard side, swept that whole side all the way down to the front. At that point, we still had lots of air left, so we just started to do the Ferris. What a, what a so they, let me... Wait. Stop. Okay, you were going to stop it at the same time. Yeah. What are they talking about? I, so, I'm confused. Sweep for what? They're doing a whole sweep. I. That's what I was about to ask you. I wonder what this is. And it's bad. We weren't in the Navy. So is I, it for mines or something like that? Uh, like a drill? I, I mean, I, I, I would say that it's probably multiple things. And I'm just guessing. So please I don't, don't know. That's why I stopped it to ask you. For you Navy guys, number one, f thank you for your service. But don't come and, you know, start... Bashing at us because we don't we don't know exactly what they're do, doing. If they do bash, though, uh, at least tell it's us what. Gus, that's yeah, talking sure, right that's fine. I'll take that. But at least we all learn. So I think I think they're probably looking for multiple things. Uh, not only things that could be stuck to it, like mines or whatever that you mentioned, um, things that can damage it, but also damage itself. Right? Is there any damage in the hole that we should repair before we head out to somewhere else? They're in Madeira, which is an island off the coast of Portugal, like far away. Um, so they are probably doing a sweep to look for damage or to look for foreign objects that are attached to it or whatever. I that's assume. weird because it's in the water column in between the two ships. No, no, that that was. I think that was just a cartoon. But that, they're just doing a whole search. They finished their boat. That's what they're saying. They had enough air. Okay. Let's go to the other boat. I, 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 yeah, that's a guess. They're doing I, I a know. whole sweep of two boats. Okay, let's roll. They just finished the Canadian one. They're going to the American. There's one. a lot of noise because all the ships all running on generators. Basically, you, know, you couldn't tell that there was any uh, any extra machinery on. But two thirds of the way up, Master Seaman Hines gets sucked up against the hull of the ship. Oh, we didn't really know why he was being pulled up against the hull of the ship. I saw Corey Wells swimming down to lend assistance. So we both swam in, and as I'm getting about two, three feet from Master Seaman Hines, I what? see Sub Lieutenant Wells get sucked up against the what? grating also. I felt myself being pulled in and I, I tried to swim away but couldn't. Does I anybody... realized it was the main circulation pump for the there ship. The amount of pull was enormous. Oh my My instructor on my ship scene diver course, I remember him saying, you know, always keep your regulator in your mouth underwater. So uh, when I felt myself being pulled in, I just grabbed my regulator. Wow. Those... I can't see much. Uh, the line from the side around my waist is also up into the circle, and I take my knife out, try to cut the line, but uh, lost grip of my knife, and it got sucked up. This is unbelievable. I could feel Master Seaman Hines beside me, 
just before I went in, I could see that he had his regulator in and his mask was still on. This guy doesn't know. Fourth diver, uh, Master Simon LePage, came down and started buddy breathing with uh, Corey Wells because Corey's regulator had been sucked out. Master Simon LePage realized that uh, no one on the surface knew what was going on. No one knew we were stuck to the bottom of the ship or that the main suction was still on. He decided that he'd swim to the surface as fast as he could, yell help, and then swim back down. Guys from the ship saw him, brought the ship to uh, emergency stations for a diving incident. Master Schumann LePage went to Corey Wells, tried to buddy breathe with him again, but unfortunately, uh, Corey had already swallowed too much water and uh, drowned. drowned. Wouldn't you leave like your BCD with them and swim to the surface? Like, I, I feel like, I, and I don't know how deep these boats are underwater. Like, if it's 100 feet, I, I, I don't think so. Like, I don't know how big these boats are, honestly, but. I feel like if you were in that situation, you were stuck to the boat. I I cannot imagine leaving you. I like I cannot imagine just being like, take a good breath. I'm gonna go up and I'll be I'll be right back. Well, I I can't imagine that. I mean, I was thinking similar thoughts, but then the reason I didn't stop and comment that thought. Let me tell you why. I realized that you are under extreme, extreme nerves and probably really scared this yeah. is nothing ever that i've seen or that you could possibly rehearse for i mean their arms are sucked up against this thing so tight they can't move and um you know the guy just reacted i mean quickly he you know maybe he thought also for a split second what they didn't say what depth that he wouldn't make it to the surface yeah and I, then I, be able to make it back down I mean, there's so many questions that I can't second guess his move. No, I mean, in retrospect, obviously, I can sit here from the comfort of the studio right. and be like, oh, I would have done this or that. But I just feel like I'm either going to stay with you there, body breathing, which I don't know if that was body breathing or if, if it was an octopus or whatever. Um, I'm, I'm either going to sit there until we both run out of air and I'm trying to right. unclock you. But that would have probably sucked me into it and then we all die. Or I'm gonna leave you my my gear, like no, I understand. I'm gonna take I mean, a big we, breath, yeah. take it off as we train how to take it off on the on the very first scuba class. You learn how to take off your gear underwater. Take it off, push it against you, you know, put it in your mouth. Take a big breath, go to the surface. I know, I know. We could second guess it here. What I'm thinking though is I'm going beyond that. What I'm wondering is what protocols are now in place because of this incident. Yeah. That's what I'm more curious about. Like they must have some serious protocols about making sure all these things are turned off before putting divers anywhere near a ship's intake anymore. Yeah. Let's, Let's see. see. The standby diver, Master Seaman b -San, came to my side, basically stood on the hull and grabbed me by the arm and tried to pull me off, but uh, couldn't pull me out of the cirque. How Once I realized hard was there was that no suction? way I was getting out. Just kept uh, kind of talking to myself, saying, all right, you know, control your breathing, hold your regulator in. I almost tried to skip breathing at times because I knew sooner or later my air would run out. Uh, 15 to 20 minutes passed. I really can't give you a good time frame. Dude, stuck to that 15, 20 minutes. As soon as I felt the surf shutting down, the two divers that were swimming around uh, grabbed the two that weren't moving and started taking them to the surface. The line that was uh, our search line was still stuck up in the search so. so i stopped it because so did the middle guy did have his regulator in right i uh, thought that's what he said yeah but so i he ran out of air i i you don't know i i don't remember okay. we, we have that's to fine. keep watching and see these the four guys are head to the surface and i'm trying to swim out and can't i pulled the uh, about uh, 30 feet of line out of the circuit and then i felt that like i was free so i started swimming up so about Found 30 feet later that i had about uh, 200 psi left in the tanks Wow. I didn't actually know until I hit the surface that the other two had drowned. Okay, so he did run out of air. Corey Wells, a newly married kind of a guy who loved life. He liked what he was doing, loved the Navy, loved diving. Billy Hines had two young boys at the time. Very jovial, pulled the team together. He was great for morale, just easy to get along with, friendly. 
Good fella. You know, it's, it's one of those things, uh, there's always Murphy, you can do everything right. Uh, but, you know, every, everything can go very drastically wrong. Uh, at the time, we had followed our SOPs to a T. That is what we did for every dive uh, before that. And it worked perfectly. Standard operating procedure for all our dives is we have a safe to dive checkoff list. Basically, it's a list of all the machinery on the ship and all the senior people on the ship that need to know that we're diving underneath. For Ferris, it, we use the same checkoff list. It's just that the, their second officer today uh, wasn't conversant in dive ops because the U.S. Navy doesn't have shift team divers. He was busy doing his duties, didn't know what he was signing, and signed off our checkoff list, basically saying that everything was shut down oh. and that everybody had been informed. Wow. Unfortunately, none of the equipment had been shut down, and uh, we, uh, we all got uh, pulled into the main circuit as we swam past it. That was going to be my next question is, was that a standing operating procedure to shut down all that stuff? Or did they develop that now after this? And in fact, it was. So they must have like a double check system going on now. And the other thing I wanted to mention was, um, I mean, it's kind of hard to talk about it because it's sort of irrelevant. But the reason they could go straight up to the surface for those that are non-divers you may have heard about the bends, but they were only at 30 feet. So yeah. they probably built up no nitrogen. You know, I don't really have much to comment on. That is absolutely super sad. Horrible. Unbelievable. What a freak, <clears throat> rare, you know, type of accident. To me, I I mean, I don't know about the U.S. Navy, as I mentioned. Um, but why would why would a second officer whoever it was to sign off on that why would that why would that person be in charge if they don't know about dive operations like wouldn't that be like a basic thing for anyone who will be in charge of a ship like that it, it, i don't know i one of those yeah. things it's probably a regular activity uh this is a standard quick dive yeah you know, i'll just sign the piece of, you know it's terrible yeah I mean, they probably it, have to sign dozens and dozens of papers throughout the day for any reason but obviously something came from this obviously procedures are changed i mean they don't want they don't study these types of things and not do anything about it after but man it's just it's just such a needless thing it didn't have to happen yeah it's unbelievable I, I now i know what you mean this one was a shocker man this was one of the more shocking ones that we've ever seen yep um and chris by the way did he, these were his friends is that what you said yeah. he knew two of his team members that he dove yeah. on that team so he lost two buddies i wonder if day. chris knows more about it i'd be curious to talk to him about it at now you know and ask him some questions what came of this and everything yeah wow chris sorry man that is yeah oof. Very, very tough uh, to watch. Um, but, you know, a lot of these accidents, again, provide safety for future divers as well. Yeah. Um, these deaths don't don't go in vain. And we have covered accidents like this in the past. Um, you know, we have one. Also, I believe it was with the Canadian Navy where they lost a diver in like 10 feet of water or something and, and he drowned. If you haven't watched that video, I'm going to leave it right here. So you can check it out. Short video today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye, everybody.